I bought these boards here. So these are battery charging boards for um, uh, charging 18650 cells. Well, in any 4.2 volt uh, or 3.7 volt cell, I think. And um, I got these ones because they're USB Type C, uh, which I hadn't seen before. So I've got one of these from before. So this is a micro USB version of the same thing that I've been been using these for a while to charge 18650 cells. So you've got various useful chips on board so that you can safely charge the cells from 5 volts. And uh, there's also a, um, an under voltage limiter chip so that when the cell gets down to a certain level of voltage it uh, powers off and you can't so you can't drain the batteries flat because that's quite bad for uh, for lithium ion cells for rechargeable cells in general I think so yeah so I've got these um, USB C versions of the same thing and uh, see I bought two and they they obviously make them in the factory they make them in this panelized form so that they're all kind of assembled in big panels if I uh, try and snap this off there we go So what, what I thought I would do with this um, is obviously I want to connect it to to a battery um, and so I've got one of these cells here so this came from inside one of the Poundland devices uh, so I thought I would connect this up to here so I can try the charging but what I could do is I could make my own equivalent of this so this is you know like a typical charger you see these in Poundland. I don't think this particular one is a Poundland one. I think this came from a Chinese vendor, but they're all very similar. Uh, so in, inside, what you find is um, a single charge discharge board that has those two connectors on, and there's a lead that you can see through the through the bottom sort of translucent cover there. But most of the space is taken up by the 18650 cell, which you can see from the the dimensions of it. So I thought it'd be fun to build my own version of this with USB-C, which I have, I've never seen a completed one of those before. So for that I need the, the charge board, I need a cell, and I also need this, which is uh, like a small buck converter. So this you can put in 3.3 volts or 4.2 volts, and out of the USB interface here you get a little over five volts so um, so this becomes a, a standard uh, USB five volt charging port so if I solder these things together we can experiment a bit with that and make sure that this board works I thought these uh, bits of solid copper wire would be good for the battery terminal so I've put that on and so I'll you know kind of make quite a solid connection between the uh, copper wires and the 18650 cell. So with that attached we can measure the voltage available on the output terminals of this thing. So about 3.4 volts. So there's a reasonable amount of charge still in this battery. Um, and now next I'm going to run a couple of wires through to the uh, the buck converter here and we can put the meter on here and see see how much voltage is coming out of the uh, the output port right so the leds come on on the buck converter now so we're all fully connected up let's put on these little meters on the port Turn around so it's the right way around. There we go, 5.1 volts we've got. Obviously, it's not drawing any current at the moment. But we could put a load on it as well and see how that behaves. So 
still with the load on. So the voltage is just over 5 volts. And it's drawing about 200 milliamps. Not sure how this is set at the moment. So yeah, that's drawing about a watt. If I can remember how to increase the current, do that. Right, that's set for an amp now. Let's just switch that on. There we go. Oh, it did say on briefly, I'm sure. Oh, I think I think that might be too much current because it's sh it's shut off. Perhaps an amp is too much for the uh, for the buck converter. I'll try and turn it down a bit. Let's say 0.8 amps. No, doesn't like that. I couldn't. Uh, couldn't get this to draw significant current but when I measured the voltage on the on the battery it dropped down to 2.8 volts so maybe the battery needs charging so I'm just going to spend a little while charging this up from another another charger try and get that up to the you know full 3.7 volts before I test it so you can see the red charging light has come on here to say that it's charging via the USB-C port so I'll, I'll leave it like that for a while and um, see if it eventually changes to a different LED to to show me that the thing is charged up. Right so the module has just started flashing now which I presume means that it's finished charging from the USB-C interface so again we can try the uh, electronic load here not sure if the camera can pick that up very well so I'm set to 0.99 amps so if I switch that on So that's drawing nearly one amp. So the, the voltage has dropped right down to 3 volts, 3.7 volts now. So I guess we're... Oh, this doesn't seem to be drawing any current anymore, does it? Oh, switch that on. Yeah, so that's... So the current's reading 0.9 amps. Oh, it's just switched it, it's switched itself... So it just switched itself off again. So I guess uh, I'm having some trouble overloading the unit. So let's turn it down a bit. Let's say 0.9 amps. So we're getting 0 0.86, 0 0.88 indicated on the meter here. And the output voltage dropped down to four volts. So, so I guess, you know, point, point 0.9 amps is about the maximum you can draw through this through this particular module. Well, I'm not sure if the current is being limited by the USB-C 
charge module I've got here or, or whether it's in the buck converter. But in any case, that's that's fairly useful. For, so point point nine amps is is good enough for you know the charging application that I've got in mind. I've left this switched on for a couple of days, and um, you see the the LED has now gone out on the um, the buck converter here. So, uh, so I suspect the protection circuit is has kicked in because the voltage is low on the uh, on the battery now so I just thought I'd put the multimeter on here and check the voltage on that cell yeah so that's reading 2.8 volts so that's well below the nominal level of the uh, 18650 so it's nice to see the protection circuit on here actually uh, working correctly and making sure that the cell can't be discharged down to zero because these lithium ion batteries can be damaged by being completely exhausted um, and then you know charged back up from from zero again looking at the charger board itself let's have a look at these chips here so this um, three chip board so this one here this is marked TC4056, but I guess this is just another variant of the TP4056, which is um, a constant current charger chip um, for these type of batteries. Um, and then we've also got the DW01S, which is a chip that stops the battery from being overcharged or undercharged or overcurrent and that's used in a lot of these designs and then the slightly bigger one there um, this was marked 8205A and um, so this is a dual MOSFET in the in a single package and in fact that's being used in conjunction with the DW01S to switch the current so we can we can look at the we can easily find the data sheets for these and we'll have a look at that in in a bit of detail in a moment so this is the uh, the main chip of the charger circuit, so the 4056. So you can see here there's a couple of LEDs, uh, LED outputs. So this one is the one that lights up when the when the battery is charging, and the standby is the one that goes low when the battery is finished charging. And over here, so we've got the battery output so this is the battery over here and you see there's even this um, this pin here marked temp so this is to measure the temperature so if if the battery has an internal um, sensor so a thermistor inside the battery which is which is quite common you can get a, a temperature reading here and so if the battery goes over temperature using charging during charging it's going to shut off um, and there's also this uh, pro prog uh, input here, which is to set the amount of current, set the maximum current for charging the battery. So you, if you put different values of R in here, you get different levels of charging current. So this is the basic building block of the of the linear charger. And then looking at the DW01, so this is the smaller chip that's used for uh, limiting um, well t for shutting off if it goes over voltage or under voltage and so you see over here is the the cell here and um, there's these two outputs that control MOSFETs and in in the case of this circuit that we're looking at today the two MOSFETs are in that external package the 8205A so you can see with those three chips together we have quite a sophisticated solution for charging batteries and making sure that they're not uh, overcharged or, or exhausted. And uh, you know so these this is quite a common design actually so I mean today I'm looking at particularly at this one that's got the USB-C interface but that same basic design has been used for micro USB and, and mini USB for 
uh, for, for some time, some years. Okay, well I hope you found that interesting and uh, we'll see you in the next video.